Hi, welcome to OCR Biology uh, Part 1 for DNA. Uh, we're focusing on nucleotides and nucleic acids. Let's look at the um, particular learning objectives we're considering today. Um, the structure of nucleotides is what we call a monomer. We'll talk more about those in a moment. The synthesis and breakdown of polynucleotides forming phosphodiester bonds. ADP and ATP and a couple of other examples of things which are also nucleotides which you wouldn't necessarily consider from their uh, general appearance. The structure of DNA and we're going to briefly mention some practical investigations that you'll be coming to um, soon in the next in the course of the next couple of weeks. So just before I uh, continue I want you to pause the video and think about the answer to these questions because most of these you should already have a vague idea about and it's probably a good idea that you read through the text and make sure you know the answer to these questions. Some of this has been covered at GCSE so it should be a, re uh, to, you know, a refresher of things you're going to be doing. Some of the detail about the chemical structure we're going to go into a little bit more detail but if you've already done this at GCSE there should be some things that you're already familiar with so we're on f slightly more familiar ground for some of you here. Okay, welcome back. What are nucleotides? Nucleotides, as it says here, are nitrogen, or sometimes they use the word nitrogenous, organic substances that form the base of nucleic acids. So nucleic acids are either DNA or RNA, the acids that are found in a nucleus. Um, and they all contain three different things, what we call a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and a nitrogen or nitrogenous base. Now, the pentose sugar we'll look at in more detail in a moment, but you can already see it's a pentagon shape. It has five carbons, so hence the name pentose sugar. Um, you can get ones which are called hexose sugars. They unsurprisingly have six carbons and are in a hexagon shape. So pentose, pentagon, both have five. So this is a five carbon sugar. Now, DNA and RNA, uh, as you hopefully already know, are deoxyribose nucleic acid and ribose nucleic acid. And the name comes from the pentose sugar involved. In DNA, the de sugar is deoxyribose. In RNA, it's just ribose. And we'll look at the slightly structural differences with those in a moment. Here they are. Uh, so here's deoxyribose. And as, as we said, it was a pentose sugar. Now, when we look at the structures, carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5 is not in the ring, it's on the edge, but it's still a 5-carbon sugar. Now you can see it's got 5 carbons in a, a ring. Uh, with ribose, it's still more or less the same structure. You've got carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in a ring, but the subtle difference being here you've got a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen Whereas in deoxyribose, you've got hydrogen and hydrogen. So subtle difference. Yeah? That's the difference between deoxyribose, less oxygen, whereas this one has more oxygen. Uh, and, OK, some long words here. The phosphate esters of pentose sugars with a nitrogenous base linked to carbon C1. Um, it just It's really talking about how these things join up together and what the bonds are that join one thing to another. And we'll be looking at those bonds in more detail. Hopefully you're already familiar with the idea of a covalent bond, the idea that it's a bond uh, between things which share pairs of electrons. And we'll look at briefly at condensation reactions, although that should be coming up when you do your work on molecules. So... Let's think about how nucleotides are formed. Uh, I make no excuse for playing this to you. Um, so in DNA, we have two different pentose sugars. Uh, it's always deoxyribose or ribose. And then one of four different bases, four nitrogenous bases, A, C, T and G, adenine, cytosine, guanine and thymine. Now, here's the full shape shown here. You're not really expected to learn the full shape, but you do need to have some familiarity at least with the idea that there are different shapes and that some of them have got two rings like this, some of them have only got one ring, and how they fit together because that becomes important. That's um, the bits, one of the big ideas as to how we understand DNA works. So the sugar and the base, they join together what we call a condensation reaction. Um, 
they create something called a nucleoside. So a nucleoside is the sugar and the base, but without yet the phosphate group. Um, let's just replay that again, just to look at the water molecule. Uh, you see this here, the OH and the H join together to make H2O, and that's your bond forming, and that's what we call a condensation reaction, where in other words, it's condensed a molecule of water out. Then we get the phosphoric acid, the phosphate group joining on. Again, you've got a hydroxyl group, the OH and the water and the hydrogen joining to make water. And you get this bond, a phosphoester bond, which forms between uh, the OH group on the side there and carbon five. Because remember, carbon five was not on the ring there; it's on the edge here. This is now a nucleotide. In other words, it's got a base, a pentose sugar, and a phosphate group. And you can get four different nucleotides for DNA. Uh, the only difference being which base you substitute in here. Phosphate group stays the same. The pentose group stays the same. It's still going to be deoxyribose every time. But you can exchange for, for instead of adenine, you can have guanine or thymine or cytosine. The key differences for RNA, obviously you've got a slightly different pentose sugar. You've got ribose instead of deoxyribose and um, uracil substitutes for thymine. Other than that, the rest of it should be the same. So just a more emphasis on the same thing. Uh, here we've got the phosphate group. You can see the hydrogen and the hydroxyl, the OH there, joining together to make a molecule of water. So that will bond to there. That's carbon five on the end there. And here, um, carbon one, you've got the nitrogenous base, in this case, thymine. Again, same reaction, hydroxyl and hydrogen to make water. And they join up so that it becomes a fully fledged nucleotide. In this case, it'd be a thymine nucleotide. And it must be for DNA because this is deoxyribose rather than ribose. There's no oxygen on joint to that carbon there. And those bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, uracil, and cytosine, are lumped together in groups. We've got purines. Purines have two rings one, two, one, two. Pyrimidines only have one single loop one, one, one. Yeah, okay, there's all kinds of fancy stuff sticking off the edge. I'm not expected to know that in detail. It's more about considering about how they join up together. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail shortly. In fact, here we are, yeah? You can see with A and T, adenine and thymine, you've got two bonds, and these are hydrogen bonds this time. These are weaker bonds, which are more easy to break. When we're looking at replication of DNA, we'll talk about why it's, we want them to be easy to break. Um, with uh, cytosine and guanine, you've got three uh, bonds. So one, two, three. So it's just the arrangement of how these things fit together. And you'll always get a two ring with a one ring, a two ring and a one ring, so that they can fit together in the right shape. And we'll look at how those fit together as we consider the structure in a little bit more detail further on. Probably a good idea at this moment to pause and think about all of these things. Can you draw the nucleotides? Um, think about polynucleotides. We're going to be drawing those in a second. Make sure you know what purine and a pyrimidine is and think about some of the differences between DNA and RNA. Let's talk about ADP and ATP, um, which are phosphorylated nucleotides. Now, this is all about respiration, and it's, um, in effect, an energy storage molecule for respiration. And ATP, you can see, well, it's a similar structure. There's our pentose sugar, and here we've got um, one of the ring structures, uh, adenine, in effect, on the side there. And then we've got one, two, three phosphate groups. So the same phosphate groups that were joined on to as uh, forming part of the DNA. You can see the phosphates here. And triphosphate implies three phosphates, one, two, three. And the energy storage bit is actually the bond between one phosphate group and the next. And if you break that bond, energy is released and it becomes something called ADP. If you want to store the energy, you form ATP, so the breaking and storing of that bond, which either releases or stores energy. So ATP, as we said, ribose, adenine, three phosphates. 
um, and so as we hydrolyze it, in other words, if we add water to it, we release a phosphate group and release a certain amount of energy. So it's an energy storage currency. Um, why do we do this? Well, it's about a small controlled bit of energy release. Yeah? If we tried to burn glucose and gave, use all of it, all of it will be given out straight away. So we've got to release the energy in small amounts. So this allows small packets of energy to be released. Some other key nucleotides to be aware of rather than knowing in detail, but unfortunately you don't need to know all these structures. You need to be aware of something called NADP. It's used in photosynthesis and something called coenzyme A. Be aware that NADP is a uh, nucleotide. Be aware that coenzyme A is a nucleotide. Job done. Do not learn the structures. Okay, uh, synthesis and breakdown of polynucleotides. Let's uh, skip ahead to the video because now we've got our single nucleotide. How do they join up to each other? Let's have a look. Well, we've got one nucleotide joining to the other. Again, condensation reaction, water molecule being formed. This is a phosphodiester bond. In other words, it's the bond between one phosphate and the next uh, uh, bit of the nucleotide joining to carbon three. So that's carbon one, that's carbon two, and that's carbon three. Now, you'll notice that this one still has the ability to bond here. So that's conjoined to another, uh, another phosphate group. This phosphate group here has a hydroxyl that can join onto another carbon three and so on. So you can make a bigger and bigger and bigger chain. Now the chain has two ends, if you like, and we use the which end to talk about as five prime and three prime. On the five prime end, uh, you've got carbon five is at the, the tip, at the three prime end, carbon three is at the bottom. So hence five prime and three prime. Now DNA um, will continue to add on more and more and more and more and more. You can see you've got different bases, but principally this phosphate and sugar arrangement is the same, sometimes described as a backbone. And DNA has a second chain which runs in the opposite direction, hence the name anti-parallel, running in two different directions to one another. As one goes up that way, the other goes down that way. Uh, and it's reversed, so three prime is at the top and five prime at the bottom. Common sense. And you've got complementary base pairing. Now, again, looking at the uh, hydrogen bonds, you can see three bonds, two bonds, three bonds, two bonds, depending on which pair it is. So the pairing up is important. Who are we responsible for DNA? Watson and Crick. Um, plus, you should also know about um, Rosalind Franklin. Uh, she took X-ray pictures of crystals of DNA straight through, and her work was used by these scientists to help to develop their work. They'd also used some work from uh, a guy called Erwin Shargraf, who had already said that, well, A was bonded with T and C bonded with G, so therefore they were in equal ratios in DNA all the time. Uh, we've seen that they've, how they bond together. We've seen that they're anti-parallel chains, and I'm sure you, you all already know that they, DNA is a double helix. In other words, two chains that wrap around each other in a spiral. Uh, sometimes described as a twisted ladder because you've got the rungs of the ladder uh, and the sort of spine of the ladder and the rungs of the ladder twisted around each other. Uh, we're going to do the replication next time. Let's just uh, see if we can name all these parts. I'm going to pause for a moment to let you have a think. You can pause it now, and then I'm going to show you the answers. There we go. Um, packaging of uh, DNA. Right, I'm going to stop this video now, and we're going to add this into another part because we're running out of time for our 15 minutes of fame. Uh, join us for part two, where we'll talk about the DNA packaging.